That's what we're at now. Reinventing Tolkien for the 21st century. See, and they want to put the real world into it, despite his raging against the Nazis. Yet we're not talking about real world political shit. We know he he didn't like the Nazis. That's no one disputes that. We're talking about, hey, this is what the, the book says, the text says, and now you're changing it to fit your political agenda. Oh my god, reproducing this non white, non-white divide along moral lines would endorse a very old-fashioned and harmful equation of physical characteristics and moral choices. But Tolkien would have hated it. Yeah, he would have. But some believe Tolkien was writing a mythology for England, which they said in the appendices, and they showed it with evidence. However, Tolkien never actually referred to his own work this way. What do they reference it to? Luke Shelton, PhD, a Tolkien researcher. Why it is wrong and misleading. So he's saying the people who did the Lord of the Rings movies are wrong and misleading because in the appendices, they de they detail that he was making a mythology for England. All right. You want to tell me Peter Jackson and all them who made those movies, are, you're better than them? F*** you. Any new adaptation of such a beloved fantasy world is bound to disappoint some more purist fans. Yeah. Adaptations are products of their times. No. And a re-envisioning of the original material they are based on. No, they're not. Just do what it says. As close as you can as faithful as you can in your adaptation. Don't change everything just because, oh, the times are new. It's the new times. We've got to update it for the times. Amazon will be critiqued, yes, regarding plot characterization and setting, but judging the casting based on skin color and claiming Middle Earth as exclusively white is not just misguided, clearly exposes what researcher Helen Young has called fantasy habits of whiteness. Oh my God. Hey, they linked to a book. You want to tell me what you, she said? Quote it. Don't just say, oh, boy, this book. This book illuminates the racialized nature of 21st century Western popular culture by exploring how discourses of race circulate the fantasy genre. As a popular element of 21st century culture, fantasies issue with race, racism, and white privilege are subjects the genre has not fully addressed. Amazon's new series is a step in the wrong direction. I had to edit that there. This is their agenda. They want to find opportune to illuminate opportunities for disrupting conventional representations of race and difference. The whiteness of video games appears to be overwhelming from stereotypical and under-representation of minorities and a 2011 and a 2003 and a 2009 study to racism in player communities. Wow, yeah, okay. This article explores how the creation and expansion of a gaming franchise that derives from Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit film trilogies variously reproduces and subverts, subverts, there it is. We've got all the buzzwords. We've got all the buzzwords. Subverts problematic racial representations and logics embedded within the source material. The source material is the racist one, okay? It's not us. It's not our politics that is changing it. It's the racist source material. Construction of races and logics of difference that structure Middle Earth in both literary and filmic forms are problematic. Problematic. It's problematic. How is constructing a race, multiple races in Tolkien's work, which you're talking about, having multiple races, literal races, humans, elves, dwarves, hobbits. How is that problematic? Is it because, oh, but there's not people of color. Yeah, but they're actually different races of beings. They're not just humans with different skin colors. I want a remastered edition of the PS2 games, Two Towers and Return of the King, because Two Towers came out and it had Fellowship and the Two Towers in it. But Return of the King was where it was all at. Return of the King game had heaps. You had three different storylines. It diverged off because you had... Frodo and Sam's and Gollum storyline. Then you had Aragorn storyline. And then you had Gandalf storyline. Two Towers co-op. Man, I would play for hours at Helm's Deep destroying uruk -hai. Literally just me and a mate just playing Ur hours. We would love it. Wrecking uruk -hai when Helm's Deep gets blown up. When the, the wall at Helm's Deep gets blown up. And they'll start streaming through. We're like, all right, who can get the best numbers? It was literally like the movie. Gimli and Legolas were like, who can get better numbers? You're just sitting there with your mate and going, all right, let's go. Who's got better numbers? Okay, so this is a list of the games. Here it is, right here. Two Towers and Return of the King. 2002, 2003 from EA. But these two are the GOAT. Like right there, you can make them right now into one game. You can put Two Towers, Return of the King into one game. The possibility of playing as evil, as an evil being has been a staple of gaming since the 90s, but was not available in the setting of Middle Earth in 04. So they're saying they want you to play as the uruk -hai and the Orcs. New areas of concern. At the start of the 21st century, some may feel that an Eurocentric modeling of peoples in conflict is unacceptable or imprudent. If you're basing a game off a Eurocentric fighting, why the f wouldn't you make it Eurocentric fighting? What are you going to have a 20 foot? What are they going to walk out with fucking tanks and bazookas in a freaking Eurocentric battle from the Middle Ages? Films generally draw from their racial or and color coding from the novels. 
Oh, source material is racist again. All racially white actors are assimilable as Middle Earth hero heroes, although they must adopt British accents. That's what we've been saying because he wanted to make a British thing. And they're saying, no, he didn't want to make a British thing. Why they sound British? Because he wanted to make a British mythology. The good display a heterogeneous mix of European, mostly British, Scandinavian cultural references because he built his whole thing on that. Evil characters, particularly uruk are visually coded as savage, tribal, and black with fangs, face paint, and dreadlocks. Kim remarks on the casting of Alerts, the Urukai leader, who was played by two different actors from Maori background. We have representation. Maoris. There were so many Maoris that were in those movies. No, 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 They played bad people. They played the evil ones, so we can't have that because they're a racist stereotype. Sean Redman argues that fellowship is saturated in racial metaphors, the logic of process, postmodern neoliberal capitalism, drawing on and burying issues of race. Discourses of race in Jackson's films are the products of source material. Source material is racist again. Problematic visual elements carry over directly into the games. Because they're adapting the movie to the game. One for one, almost. Unless it's the Lego one, which they make funny stuff in between. And they make jokes about things. Good God. Plastic figurines, stylized dreadlocks, and face paint. Fuck off. Tolkien's world is one where diversity is not only valued but essential if evil is to be defeated. The hierarchical racial logics present in the films are codified in game rules which circumscribe everything from fighting ability to endurance, weaponry, and armor. In the two earliest RPGs, which were the best, gamers switched between members of the Fellowship utilizing Legolas, Archery, Gimli, Axework, and Aragorn's sword fighting. Legolas I used the most because you could get the more accurate arrows, and it was just easy to use Legolas. It wasn't because he was white or he was uh, high, on, higher up on the hierarchy of racial logics. Those abilities are racialized. Oh, say. Not least by the close connections with the films as texts that construct them in this manner. Because they're based on the text. The subterranean origins of the goblins and trolls compared to the soaring buildings of the elves equate evil with barbarism and good with civilization. Would this person consider Hitler evil? Was he trying to build a civilization? Or was he just barbaric? He was. But he was trying to build a civilization. This person is going to go around and around in circles. That's so black and white, man. Lego. Let's go to Lego. I love the Lego games. What do we talk? What's wrong? What's wrong with the Lego games, bitch? Lego, Lord of the Rings, and Hobbit combine two highly successful franchises. Yes, aimed at families and children. How are they problematic, though? They both follow franchise trends substantially. For example, core narratives following the journeys of the Fellowship and Bilbo, respectively. Yes, provide the structure and between one fifth and one quarter of the gameplay. Well. Lego The Hobbit only did the first two games. I wanted the third game because they were going to do as DLC, but they never released it. With the remainder comprising side quests of various types. Yeah, during the first playthrough, the player only has access to those characters. Yes, that's true. Which are presented in the films. Which are present in the films. For example, Frodo, Sam, Gollum, Bakura, Thungle. Yeah, because it. the reason why that is, they want you to play the story with just the characters that were in the story that happened. And then what you can do is you can use OP characters for that uh, section of the story after you've beaten the game and then in the lego ones they specifically require you to play more than once because there's things that you can't access in the lego games with the characters they give you until you've already beaten it that's like in the avengers one too there's like hulk handles you got to get that you got to use hulk for but you can't use them in that section although the core dichotomous narrative structures each level both good and evil characters can be used to complete side quests yes playing as evil characters in lego games is different to playing them in other games the framing makes no distinction between them once they're available. What the f***? Neoliberal colorblindness that simultaneously invokes signifiers of race but denies its significance. Premise that the race does not matter or goes unseen as long as the individual behaves according to white social and cultural norms. In both Lego games, this is structured into the game itself. Evil characters such as Sauron are playable. Sauron's attributes allow players to use him to solve puzzles, yes, for the purpose of the game. That's true which results in rewards. He performs acceptable. Well, you can either use Sauron or uh, Saruman or Gandalf usually to do the, or Galadriel to do the magic stuff. Sauron you need for one specific thing and you need to break a wall with him, I'm pretty sure, I remember. Wherever they are present in free play, he will automatically attack and be attacked by other non-player characters. A racialized bad character, an orc or goblin can play it being good. So what she's talking about is when you play as that character and you're in a good area, like if you take Sauron, in, I've done this. I've played this game hundreds of hours. If you take Sauron or any other evil character in this game and you take him to free play and you're just running around like Hobbiton or something, someone will come up to you and start beating the 
fuck out of you because you're an evil character and you're not supposed to be in that area. That's what she's talking about. And also, if you do it the opposite way, if you take one of these good characters and you're in a level that's like bad or like Liam Mordor, you're going to get attacked. That's what happens. That's why it makes you choose the characters for that area. So it's specific to that area. Uh, this is so ridiculous. Why would the Lego characters that live in Hobbiton want to be nice to Sauron who's trying to destroy them? That's such basic kid stuff. That's why they do it and they make these games for kids. It's a Lego game. Good God. All's not lost, even for a world like Middle Earth that was structured by race when it was first imagined and has had depths added to that by adaptation of visual media, game design and mechanics have the potential to work against racial logics to challenge the validity of race as a primary and essential category of being. That's how you see the world, not us. The creation of multiple games within a franchise can perpetuate problematic representations and constructions of race by the extensive reuse of both graphic and narrative elements. Dark skin tones in Lord of the Rings games are always associated with evil and are often combined with traits such as hyperphysicality and hypermasculinity that have long ideological ideological associations with blackness. So you're saying that dark skin tones and people have better looking physiques and they're more masculine? Black hypermasculinity can function as a form of racial tourism. Motherfucker, this bitch is f 